Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe uh, Live. Uh, today what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the casting conference I went to. The Star Alliance, the Foundry Star Alliance, uh, put this on. And uh, quite frankly, um, of all the shows that I've seen in the last four or five years, this one seemed to have the most, uh, the most influence over me. I'd like to thank um, John Stokes. He put on the, uh, the little presentation here that I'm going to talk about. It was, like I say, extremely well attended. They thought that they were going to get around 80 people, but they wound up with about 150, which uh, was pretty significant. And basically, my presentation was on what's the difference between the die castings that you see surrounding me and the sheet metal uh, alternative. And basically, how I started it off was let's start with the machine tools that you need in order to make these things happen. Now, as luck would have it, um, they had uh, they also had representation from the the groups that that um, uh, do stamping and whatnot. And so uh, we had the best of both worlds, people telling you how you could do it one way with stampings and how you could do it another way with castings. So if you have a look at this uh, picture right here, you can see that this is a casting machine, it's a, or sorry, a, a stamping machine. It's kind of a bigger one. Um, this has about 18 to 24% off all. Off all is kind of like scrap. Sometimes you turn it into uh, other parts if you can figure out how to blank it out. Most of the time, no, it, it just gets uh, dropped into a hopper into the floor and then uh, it's taken away with conveyors and, uh, and you, you send it out for scrap. The, the fellow that was doing, was, uh, his name was Jerome Favio and um, he was giving quite a bit of good information, I thought, on how steel is, uh, the new steels that, are, that everyone's using. And, um, and how they fit inside of the different mm, structural elements on, on using steel. Steel is um, still the only alternative we've got that's cost effective for a body, um, the body panels and whatnot. Um, stainless steel is nice on the Cybertruck, but it's extremely expensive and heavy. Um, you can use aluminum, that's uh, my one of my least favorite uh, choices for stamp st stampings uh, for a body. <clears throat> for my study, what I did was I took a plant that we had worked on, the Mitsubishi plant, and I added in so that every operation that's needed in order to make a stamped product would be added to that factory, and you can see that in green. Those are the smaller parts that are usually bought from a a uh, tier two or a tier three supplier. The, um, the plant, uh, when I was done looking at giga castings and castings in general to build what you'd normally use with sheet metal, looked quite a bit different. All those blue marks you see right there, those are parts that I do not need. So you can see now that the plant has gotten considerably smaller if you make all that blue stuff disappear. Now, the, the big things about all of the, all the different uh, products and whatnot that I'm gonna be talking about is the total accounted cost. Not, not the piece cost or uh, other, other individual areas like labor and whatnot, but everything included, everything. And when that happens, one of the things you have to take into account is scrap. So, I, I have confirmation now that the scrap rates, and this is like unusable aluminum that has to go to scrap, um, that looks like anywhere from uh, four to eight percent, because there's not that much that you can't use when you uh, when you do a, a giga casting. A lot of people have asked me about, well, what what do these things all look like and whatnot? So this is a plant layout of what a cell section would look like using um, IDRA's machines and then the other machines that have to go along with it. So you also need to have a casting furnace. And um, here's uh, Stoic. They, uh, they're the guys that, uh, that they use for those furnaces. And then of course, 
you need molds. And the co-stamp puzzle molds are the ones that most people are uh, focusing their attentions on. Of course, after that, you've got to get rid of the aluminum. Now, most of the aluminum that comes off this trimming press is going to be, um, <clears throat> is still going to be usable. You'll be able to recycle that. You just cut it up in bits um, and then throw it back into the, uh, into the furnace and, and remelt it and away you go. Now, these things are going to take the place of some of the spots where you'd have a gigapress or, or maybe even a, a casting machine of some sort. So when we did that, this is what I came up with. So if you have a look, you can see that the floor space utilization is 47% uh, less with giga castings. The investment cost is 8% uh, with giga casting. The system cost for the front would give you about 8.5% savings, a cost savings, a total accounted cost savings. And then the systems for the rear would be about 96 Labor goes down by 65% when you're using castings. That would be the labor to weld uh, these bits and pieces and transport them from place to place. The quality goes from a four sigma, which is um, 6,210 ppm parts per million. And that, uh, that gives you, a, if you're using a sigma shift of 1.5. The quality with the machined castings goes to six sigma, which is 3.4 parts per million. And that again is with a, a 1.5 sigma shift. Now, these things were very interesting, but the most interesting thing to me was one of the very last presentations. And that was looking at um, a thixotropic molding machines that are slightly different than everything else. This is, again, an alliance between several different companies and, um, and uh, the people at um, 595, they, uh, they're actually getting parts made using this system. And so we have to thank them the most. This was, uh, this was to me was uh, the, really the best because at the end of the day, um, combining a cold chamber die casting system, which is similar to what, that is what uh, Hydra produces, and a thixotropic molding machine, no one's ever thought of or uh, thought of this before or ever done it before, that's for sure as far as I'm concerned. And the people at, uh, at um, 595, they said, hey, that's a great idea. So if you look at the, at the right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see that there's a pink uh, CAD drawing. And then you'll see the uh, real drawing, or the real component is over there on the left-hand side. A lot of people are not really familiar with thixotropic molding. So thixomolding is a, um, is a way of taking uh, magnesium when it's in a, a state similar to soft butter, and then sending it down, it comes through a screw that has, a, the screw starts out rather small in diameter and gets bigger and bigger. And as it's doing that, it's heating up the aluminum with a, um, an electric chain, uh, like an induction heater. And it's also, because you're taking a large quantity and you're crushing it through the thixotropic machine, what you're doing is you're actually inducing more stress, which gives you, or more uh, friction, which gives you more heat. And that's what turns it from cold chips of magnesium into warm uh, slurry that can be shoved into the, um, into the mold. Um, this is a better explanation than what I have, what you see on the screen right now. This tells you what's going on. Now that's a standard thixotropic uh, molding machine, but what's happening here is um, TPI is uh, supplying the thixotropic molding machine, but then what's happening is um, Hydra is producing a RAM, and that RAM accompanies the shot, pushes it in, and now what I can do is I can get much bigger components than I could have normally with, uh, with thixotropic molding. Um, and these things, like here's a sample of the parts that are being produced right now uh, for 595. And these parts, uh, coupled with that, you can see the, uh, the thixotropic screw there. That's the delivery screw. And you can see as, as the screw turns, 
that material is going to get crushed tighter and tighter and tighter together. Now, what they had at the, uh, at the show was um, this setup right here. This is the setup that they're going to be, they're producing parts on right now, the parts I just showed you. So why is it a good idea? Well, because like I said, now with this type of a process, we can wind up with much larger components that have uh, tremendously more strength. And magnesium is kind of like one of my favorite materials. It's, it's stronger than aluminum. Um, it's lighter than aluminum. It has a tremendous amount of uh, resilience when it comes to crash worthiness. It gets rid of vibrations and whatnot, but also it's a, a little friendlier to the um, to the dyes and molds. So if we have a look at this uh, picture right here, you can see that the aluminum cold chamber will get you about 100,000 shots before you're gonna to have to do something to, the, um, something to the dyes. If you're using a magnesium cold chamber with high pressure die casting, now you're looking at, you can get about 180,000 shots. But with thixo, thixotropic molding using magnesium, in that fashion that we just talked about, you're gonna get 250,000 shots. So that to me is kind of like a, a big deal. Anytime I don't have to polish the molds continuously and I can get a better product out, I'm going to be more interested. Now, before everybody starts saying, well, wait a minute, I've seen high pressure die castings of uh, magnesium that are, are much, uh, much bigger than the small pieces you showed me, that is true if you do die casting, but thixotropic molding will give me thinner walls, a lighter part, a stronger part. It's more like a forging than it is anything else. And so consequently, that's why I'm excited about it. Um, I hope this information helped you out. Um, I put the names of the people in case you are interested in going in that direction. And by the way, as far as going in that direction, um, almost every major uh, automotive car company is going in the direction of these bigger castings. Everybody is moving in this direction and I would suggest that the ones that aren't moving in that direction should really go back and assess their future plans. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and to all the folks in Italy who treated me very well, uh, got great food, we're going to show a, a little video, a separate video about this vineyard we went to with an amazing um, end. So um, stay tuned. There's more to come. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.